Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about a brand new Gen 5 SSD Seriously get used to hearing me say that I swear over the next three or four months We're well, gonna be saying that like 10 15 times easy, but today I want to talk about this the a data Legend 970 in its holographic box that frankly the five-year-old in me is absolutely losing its mind over But snazzy boxes aside it has to be said this isn't the first time we've seen this SSD back in May June of this year We were over in Taipei for Computex and we saw the Legend 970 alongside a new water cooling SSD They're working on at the moment now a data well established in the SSD game. We've talked about them before in the Gen 4 tier when we we're looking at the XPG series of SSDs there, the Blade and the X70 and the S70, I believe. And this is their Gen 5 entry. I believe this is their first Gen 5 SSD. And I will say that it's a little pricey. I mean, that may be something I've repeated oft on this channel and other channels, I'm sure I've said it to you, but the Gen 5 era of SSDs has arrived expensive but what's really disappointing about it is the difference between all of them in terms of hardware architecture in terms of performance is you know depressingly small and although these are still the first gen of gen 5 ssds and gen 5 motherboards and gen 5 systems and gen 5 compatible cpus are beginning to become a lot more affordable gen 5 ssds the come down in that price has been very slow indeed right now despite a data still been a big name but not the biggest name in consumer ssds they're actually lower priced than seagate's drive the drive that you would have expected the 540 to be the most expensive drive in the market and it isn't this one arrives at the 1tb uh, 189 dollars and the 2tb modeled at this one as 129 dollars there so and is not a cheap drive at all now if we take a little look inside what we get for our money slot that out of there because it's you know the gen 4 entry the xpg um i was a huge fan of that again we've got a little bit of information there about the packaging there they're telling us to be very careful presumably because of the additional power needed for this um attached heat sink and this is one beefy drive again if we bring that closer to the camera then i'm sure we'll do some close-up video stuff in just a moment the first thing that may hit you is that big old chunky heat sink now that heat sink also has an active cooling fan inside the active cooling fan powered with a sata power connector there so you better make sure that you have got sata power at least available on the psu inside your pc rig and it doesn't look quite the same as it looked when I saw it over in Computex. They've definitely changed and added that fan there because, let's face it, the Gen 5 era, ooh, it gets hot. But in terms of hardware architecture on this drive, it's pretty much what we all would have expected. It's arriving with that fires on E26 controller. Let's face it, 18, 90% of the SSDs in the market right now are featuring that P, uh, that um, onboard SSD controller. It's a great little controller in terms of NAND, just like everybody else. They're rocking 232 layer Micron NAND. That's 3D TLC NAND. Now, in terms of memory, this is rocking uh, 4 gig of DDR4 memory. We are seeing an increase in terms of DRAM when it comes to the Gen 5 generation of SSDs and it's NVMe 2.0. So all fairly standard stuff that you even carry on with the whole holographic thing there on the base. But I mean, it's not the most awe-inspiring SSD when you compare it to the rest on the field. And given that it's arrived, you know, after the Seagate drive, even after the next storage drive, a Japanese brand who don't have the same market share, and then moreover, they're already working on their Gen 2 revision, which promises over 12 gigs a second higher than their current available drive. So, a day to bring in this to market now seems just a little late to the party. But I will state, you know, as far as their performance numbers are, they do stand up. The 1TB at 9,500 megabytes per second sequential read. And in terms of sequential write, the 1TB, as we've come to expect to the Gen 5 generation, at just 8,500 there. Now, for the 2TB, which is what we're going to be measuring here later on with our benchmarks on the Gen 5 system, this is 10 gig over 10 gig. That's right. 
you're looking at um, um, 10,000 megs up and 10,000 megs down, which is lovely stuff. And in terms of 4K random IOPS, read and write on the 2TB 1.4 million and 1.4 million respectively, 1.3 and 1.4 million on the 1TB there. So it's all largely what we have come to expect on this. Now, the heatsink included, let's face it, we're not going to give them extra points for the heatsink being included because frankly, in the Gen 5 generation, nearly all SSDs are going to arrive with heatsinks included because of that heat barrier. Now, in terms of durability, we'll look at an SSD here with 1.6 million hours MTBF, but we don't really care that much about MTBF. Um, but when it comes to the durability rating, the 1TB at 700 terabytes written and the 2TB at 1400 terabytes written. So you're looking at 0.38 drive writes per day there. So it's not terrible numbers, but as I said at the introduction, it's an SSD that feels like it's arrived in the market later than it should have. Obviously, they'd released it during the middle of the summer. No one would have purchased it because everyone's busy on holidays. But bringing it out now and bringing it out, you know, into the middle of the year, there's just not a tremendous market for it right now. And a lot of other drives with incredibly similar architecture to this have already arrived a few months prior to this one and are currently available at better pricing. So let's grab ourselves a screwdriver and take a look inside it and see what's going on underneath that heatsink. Okay, so screwdrivers down and we can take a little look on what we've got inside here. So the base level, we've got ourselves a normal size thermal pad there. Not tremendously thick, but I don't think it needs to for the base level. Um, this NAND already shows us that we've got double-sided NAND on this 2TB, which shouldn't be a huge surprise. If we leverage that off of there. We've got ourselves a single plate of thermal padding there at the bottom. It's not hugely precise, I'd say. I was kind of hoping there'd be an additional one on top of where the controller resides. And as we bring it up there, we've got ourselves that Fizon controller there at the top. That's kind of the industry vogue for Gen 5 consumer SSDs right now. Again, not unusual. Can't really blame them for that. They've got a couple of um, nuggets of 2TB SK Hynix uh, memory there, just built into the middle, pretty much what we'd expect. And we've got four modules of the NAND there. So again, that 2TB is separated, two on the rear and two more NAND modules there at the top. Don't worry, we should have that close up there on the video. But, I mean, again, it's not that it's bad. I do not think it's bad. I think it's a lovely, well-put-together SSD, but it's not a hugely exciting SSD, at least on a hardware level, because we've just seen and heard so many SSDs like this already. And I think the real proof in the pudding is going to be getting this through the benchmark. So why don't we get this SSD over there onto the test machine and start putting it through some paces. Right, so we've got the drive connected. We've booted up the test machine here. You can probably hear the fan a little bit there in the background. It's not the noisiest fan, but you will notice it if you're in quite close proximity to the system. Again, fairly standard in the Gen 5 era, particularly with a lot of gamer PC cooling. Um, as you can see down there, the specifications are everything we described earlier on. And if we have a look at Crystal Disk Mark here, we can see that it is being uh, registered as a Gen 5 times 4 transfer mode there, so it is on the right slot there it's been powered on for less than an hour and the default kind of base level temperature we're seeing at the moment is 32 degrees i've already assigned the drive as an available drive on my pc here indeed if we make our way into uh, the computer storage management we can see i've done a standard level uh, format of the drive there assigned it the letter p there for our testing and from this point we're going to go ahead and run several tests i'm sorry if you see a black screen while i'm opening these up windows admin but we're going to be using Crystal Disk. We're going to be looking at Atto Disk Benchmark. We're going to be looking at ASSSD. And we're going to be looking at AJA. All of these tools are going to be utilizing a variety of different file format scales. And what we're going to do now is run a lot of those tests and bring you back in around about an hour, hour and a half for when all of these tests have completed. Now, I could show you some of them here on screen. Case in point, if I go ahead and select the P drive there, go for a four gig test file there, on that we go for a mix 730 
whenever we do uh, performance benchmarks if we're utilizing screen recording software such as in my case OBS as you see here on screen that always has a tendency to impact the results not loads but it certainly is felt and sometimes while I'm looking at this and seeing a 9100 megabytes per second read performance rating I need to know that the OBS uh, recording isn't having an impact on that so what I'm going to do is suspend all screen recording any capture and then fast forward to the completion of these tests bring you back in and go through the results I'll see you for me in about an hour, hour and a half and for you mere seconds see you shortly Right, so our tests have completed, and as you can see here, if we go into the temperatures here, we can see that throughout the course of the benchmarks that we performed, with Atto Disk Benchmark probably being the heaviest one there, the highest temperature we saw was 56 degrees. Definitely, that active cooling system on that drive helped. To put that into a little bit of perspective, if we look at that drive I mentioned earlier today, the next storage one, and we go back to its own temperature readings, we can see that that one peaked at around 54, but it required this enormous heat sink here to be utilized. Whereas the Legend 970 was getting away with a much smaller heat sink because it could trade off a lot of that heat dissipating scale thanks to that cooling system on there. So there's definitely a trade off if you want to go for those smaller drives overall. Now, if we go through the results one by one, the first set of results going to go for the probably the easiest to read and those are our crystal disc reports there and as you can see with the exception of at one moment there every single result exceeded that 10 gigabyte performance level there on read and write from the 1 gig to the 16 gig and the only anomaly was this one down here at the 4 gig uh, the 4 gig test file uh, that we're only able to achieve 9874 only but the real thing is to really take on board there is to look at the IOPS ratings there. We saw that 1.4 rating, uh, 1.4 million IOPS there proved through and through, but we certainly saw that oversaturation, something that I'll touch on later on, but is unfortunately something of a bottleneck that Gen 5 systems, not so much the SSDs, are really going to have to work around with. Now, coming out of those, and we make our way into our next ones, these are the Atto Disk Benchmark reports. And we'll head in there. Those are the IOP readings for each of them there. Fairly kind of predictable stuff. Do bear in mind that the way Atto judges gigabytes, gigabits, and individual megabytes does change how it you know compares to the other results we saw. But if we head over to the read and write figures there, we can see consistent numbers there in the nine gigabytes there. So again, that's that transition between uh, megabytes gigab and gigabytes. But ultimately, it means that we saw consistent performance numbers all the way through with the gray and the red side by side, largely identically, exactly what we want to see on this Gen 5 drive overall there. Now, if we come out of that and go into ASSSD uh, performance there, again, another kind of translation here to take on board in terms of the read and write numbers. And although it seems like it's lower, it's just because of the way ASSSD rates and benchmarks across. There are compression benchmarks, there's standard benchmarks, they're all in there. But ultimately, these are all still pretty good numbers overall with consistent scoring all the way across. Now again, we're going to head back into those next storage reports there. Because remember, that was a 1TB drive. This is a 2TB drive. So there is going to be an element of difference there between the two of them. But if we have a look at similar stats there between them, and see if we can zoom in a little bit more. No, we can't. We can see those numbers there rated at 9,400 9, uh, and 9,400 respectively. And certainly higher on this A data by comparison. So if we come out of this one, finally go into the AJA benchmarks here. And we're looking at two things when we're looking at these. Yes, of course, we're looking at the big number at the top. But predominantly what we're occupied with are these graphs at the bottom. So we want to see as little drops as possible. And overall, those are pretty darn good numbers I'm seeing all the way across there. Ultimately, these are the sort of stats I'd like to see. And particularly when we're looking at the 5K Red 16 gigabyte test file on this drive those numbers were consistently high in the 7000 for quite a great deal of time to put it into perspective if we run it down we can peak into the 8000s when we've given the drive a lot more time to cool down these are still great numbers for such a large file type but the issue lies in oversaturation so for example if we go for 
the uh, one gig file there and this time we change those settings to be a continuous run watch what happens we see it starting at that seven to eight thousand consistently hitting those numbers but we'll start to see seven thousand appearing a lot more and start to see the dip in those numbers in smaller fractions now if we move over to the uh, come out of that there we go into the four gig test file and repeat the same process go for it there we're going to see another generation of those numbers once again it's going to be small but as you can see the larger the file size the more those dips sort of present themselves every now and then as we see 5,000, 6,000 start to appear in the middle of those runs. Ultimately, the real question here is, is this a good drive? And it is, I can't deny that. It is a good Gen 5 SSD. The Fires on E26 controller is doing its job. We've got consistent performance as well as, you know, as much as we can with Gen 5 SSDs in the architecture as it stands right now. And it is really about how host systems are going to embrace a lot of this storage performance given to it. So, yes, the A Data Legend 970 is a very good SSD. And if you're looking at a Gen 5 SSD right now, it's as good as any of the others out there. There's just no denying that the price point when you look online is still higher than I think a lot of others are going to like to pay right now. So if you are considering this drive right now, particularly in September 2023, maybe hold out a month or two, particularly with Black Friday around the corner, because almost certainly this is going to see the odd price drop. It is, I can't stress this enough, a good SSD. And its cooling is also particularly good when it was in uh, all of our testing there some very good temperature numbers there's just no denying that it doesn't really stand out from the rest of the gen 5 crowd right now when they're all rocking the same 232 layer 3d nand and fires on 26 controller things need to stand out a little bit more to justify a price tag of that caliber it's a good ssd but a might expensive right now at least thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video there should be a link below to the written guide with more performance benchmarks we've done and some close-ups a lot of the hardware architecture of this drive so i recommend and you check that out but apart from that thank you so much for watching we've done loads of ssd benchmarks and tests we're going to do more later this year stay tuned for that but apart from that have a great week and i'll see you next time